Good day, grade 12s. Uh, today we're looking at the application of the log laws. Um, and please make sure to watch the actual video explaining the log laws and how, how it works and which uh, ones we can apply. As mentioned before, you don't need to be able to prove them, but you have to be able to use them. Okay, so in grade 11, we had these types of questions um, with exponents. Let's say, for instance, um, 3 to the power of x equals uh, 9, you know, just like that, 9, yeah, let's say that's the equation, then uh, let's say 9 to the power of x plus 1. How about that? That's more grade 11 question. And then our strategy was always to work towards having the same base, right? So then, when we had the same base, we can then conclude that the exponents are equal to each other. And then we can conclude that x is negative 2. So this was a nice strategy when how we could uh, use it with um, use our exponents and how to solve this. But what if you are faced with a question that looks something like um, this? Let's say 3 to the power of x equals 5. And you can clearly see that there is no way to work towards a common base. And uh, in grade 11, you normally just use your calculator to test until you get a value that's similar. But now I'm going to show you how to apply the log laws in solving this type of question. So first of all, you write down a log on both sides. Please take note that our base, if it's not mentioned, is equal to 10. So technically... There's a little thing there. Okay. Now that we've written it down in this form, we can move the x to the front. So x times log 3 equals log 5. This then means that x is equal to log 5 divided by log 3 which is also equal to log 5 base 3. So now, if you have a calculator that has the ability to put in the base and the number there, then you can use this. If you don't have, you simply just say log 5 divided by log 3. And this will give you an answer of 1,46. And I'm rounding off to two decimal places. So this is the first place, where I'll, just to illustrate how you can use the log laws in solving. So the second example will have to do with financial mathematics. And with financial mathematics, uh, when we get there, I'll tell you again. Um, you will be working out the timeline. In other words, you'll have an, uh, an investment and then you're going to ask you how long does it take for this investment to grow to a certain value or anything like that. But long story short, the expression will look something like this. So I'm just taking a random example. Let's say you have uh, 5,000 times 1,0 1 plus 0 0.25 bracket to the power of n equals let's say 30,000 okay again how we will get to an expression like this I'll explain later when we get to financial mathematics but for now the question is just solve for n okay so first things first is we have to get rid of the 5,000. We cannot leave it there and put a log in front on both sides because we've got an exponent to this bracket but not to the 5,000. So, <clears throat> so simplify. 
the left hand side can become 1 comma 2 5 to the power of n equals 30,000 divided by 5,000. And then uh, we can simplify it fur further and say 1 comma 2 5 to the power of n equals 6. Now we use our log laws. So you put a log on the left hand side and a log on the right hand side. And again as previously mentioned, if no base is indicated, we assume the base is 10. You don't have to indicate that those two tens, so that's why I'm putting it in red. Okay, now the exponent can move to the front. So this will be n times log 1,25 equals log 6. Therefore, n equals log 6 divided by log 1,25. And if you use a calculator, you will get to an answer of 8,03. And this is the two basic ways of applying the logarithmic laws. Um, now we're going to move on to the exponential function and how the logarithm function is an inverse to that function. This is the main way of applying um, the log logarithmic function. Okay, so we are going to work through two scenarios. Uh, explaining uh, by starting with two different exponential graphs. Okay, so we are going to take a, just a simple exponential graph. Um, let's say y equals 2 to the power of x. And you will remember from the definition of a logarithmic function, uh, <coughs> excuse me, but just before uh, we go, we went through the laws, uh, we made a statement like this with an a there, y equals a to the power of x. Then they said, if this is true, we define the log function as x equals log of base 2, we have log x of base 2. Do you remember that? Um, sorry, that would be a y. Okay, so this is our definition. But remember, we are working with, with a logarithmic function as the inverse to an exponential function. So I need to show you just how we actually get there. Um, and then keep in mind that with an inverse, the x and the y values swap around. So that means for our inverse, we will end up with y equals log base 2. Of x. So that's where we're going. That's where we're going to end up. But let me show you how we'll do that by using our log laws. So first step for inverse is we are swapping the x and the y around. Next step is we are going to apply our log laws. We're going to write down a log on both sides. That then means that the exponent can be written in front. <coughs> like that. And then we divide with log 2. So this becomes log x divided by log 2. Which means That log y equals uh, y equals log x base two, and you will see it's exactly the same as what we had there. So this is um, how you use the log laws to get to the inverse. Now uh, you don't have to take this road at all in, an, in a test, except to ask you to show them how you got to that expression. But you just know if this is the exponential function, its inverse looks like that one. 
So this is how we are going to work with it. Let's look at the graphs for these two functions. So first of all, we are drawing the exponential function. Um, this is a positive exponential function. I'm just going to write it down here again. So, and the rule with an exponential function, if it doesn't have any b value in front of that 2, uh, then it always intercepts the y-axis at 1, because anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So, this graph will look like that. y-intercept at 1, no x-intercept. Um, so that's the limitations and the definition of this graph. Now for inverse, it always reflects around the y equals x line. And for an inverse, whatever the y-intercept was will become the x-intercept. It's easy to remember. With the x values on the negative, it approaches 0. So now for the y values in the negative, it will approach 0. So it will look like that. And then in the positive x values, it increased dramatically, exponentially, with, with the y values. So for positive x values, of, um, y value over here, for the y values, it will increase exponentially as well. <coughs> so let's look at our function. Uh, by the way, this is now an exponential function. This function is our inverse to the exponential graph. The domain and the range, let's just look at the domain and range for the function. So let's say this was um, function fx. And then this is the inverse. Um, the domain... And range. And this is for the function and then for the inverse. So for the function domain is x element of r. That means the range for the inverse will be y element of r. The range for the function is y bigger than 0. And then that means um, the domain for the inverse will be x bigger than 0. Let's look at the second type of exponential graph we're going to work with. And that is when the constant is a fraction. So you can see there, y equals a half to the power of x. And um, it can also be written, and be aware of this, it can also be written as 2 to the power of negative x because of exponential laws. So keep that in mind, it can be hidden uh, in both ways. So if you remember, um, if y is equal to x to the power of a half, that means inverse will be y equals to log x with base half. Now, in an exam, well, it's very easy to write it in this format. So when you see it in this format, with 2 to the power of negative x, my suggestion is rewrite it as a half to the power of x, and then you immediately can identify the inverse. Um, I'm going to show you both ways of getting to the inverse, even if you work from here, just for interest, for those interested. Um, so over here, for the inverse, we know we first have to swap the x and the y around. Then we write down the log function on both sides. Then we rewrite it with the y in front. 
and then y equals log x divided by log half so that means our final expression is y equals log x with base half exactly as we had it over there okay now what if you forgot that these two are the same and you need to work with this expression okay then it will look as follows first things first to get to the inverse you swap the x and the y around so you will also have x equals 2 to the power of negative 1 now you still do the same you say log x equals log 2 to the power of negative y. Now again, if you spot that this is true and you want to change the 2 to the power of negative into a half, you can do it and then it will look exactly the same as on this side. But let's say you did not do that, you forgot, then you could have written it down as follows. Negative y log 2 so negative y equals log x divided by log 2 and then we can multiply the negative on both sides it will become negative and then we apply our log laws and it will look like that so take note these two are exactly the same they mean the same thing Okay, uh, then, so keep that in mind. But again, as suggested earlier, the easiest and the best is just to, when they give you this, they sometimes hide information in this format. When you receive it in this format, you change it, and then from there on, work out your normal um, way of doing it. So let's draw the graphs. So first one will be our exponential graph. And as a normal exponential graph goes, uh, rises to the positive values, this one will rise to the negative values. So it will look like this. Intercept is still at 1. And this is when your, uh, your base is a fraction, as you know. This is now y equals a half to the power of x. Okay, the, the inverse function will then be an exact mirror image of this around the y equals x line so our y intercept is a 1 the x intercept will still be a 1 when x was a negative it was rising so now when y is a negative it will be rising where x was positive it was approaching 0 so where y is positive it will be approaching 0 so this function will look like that and if you draw it correctly, they will intercept on the y equals x line. And this is how the inverse will look like for this type of exponential graph.